I'm, I'm going to start with just a little overview of the project. Um, about three years ago, we, we have an old facility, Valley Ranch, and we started an internal discussion about uh, the fact that it's probably time uh, to look at a new facility. And, and so internally, um, that discussion was just that. Uh, we went around, as Don knows, and, and started to look at other facilities. And the initial thought was we're moving our corporate headquarters, our office, uh, and our training center uh, for football. And then we had a wonderful opportunity through some uh, real estate, previous real estate transactions to have a discussion with the city of Frisco that had a 91 acre piece of land. Um, and they were interested through incentives of having the Cowboys come to Frisco in a public private partnership that also included the school district, which is really unique. The school district, and this only happens in Texas, um, was going to build a $90 million football stadium. And um, so as the discussions uh, transpired, we said, why don't we put that football stadium on our grounds, have it become our indoor practice facility, and then we'll operate it as a multi-use event center. Uh, and that became part of the discussion. So we have this unique dynamic where we have uh, a high school school system, which has eight schools in it now, um, integrated into our project. But beyond that, with 91 acres, there was a lot to think about and a lot to accomplish. We kind of started uh, just in a room discussing what do we want this to be, and what we quickly realized, and, and to me was no surprise because of the owner I work for, he wanted to do this differently than it's ever been done before. And there were a couple key messages to that. Um, one is we decided pretty quickly that this should be a place where Cowboys fans can come. And typically, uh, the headquarters and training center of a sports franchise is often off the beaten path, high security, low signage, and not a place that a regular fan will often interact. And so we thought, you know what, let's start with that. Let's make this, for lack of a better term, I even hate to kind of say it, but I'll say it just to paint the picture, can this be a little bit of a 91 acre Cowboys Disneyland? Um, secondly is we had to make money, because we, we don't approach anything without um, that in mind. So it became how do we monetize this? Um, and we'll get into some of the ways, and that certainly was part of where Advent came to play in a really significant way is how we got into monetizing um, what we're doing uh, uh, there. But that, so that was kind of an interesting challenge for a 91 acre mixed use development. So just to summarize all that, what we have now today, not all 91 acres are built out, and we're gonna show you a video to give you a feel for it, is we have taken what we now view as our asset of our training center and headquarters and plopped it in the middle of a 91 acre mixed use district that includes hotel, shopping, restaurant, office, uh, fitness center, private membership club, and, and other entities, which we've now become partners or investors or owners in some of these other businesses. Um, so it's really been an interesting process. I do want to mention we have Ron Turner and uh, Byron here with Gensler, who is our architect on the project. This started three years ago in a room with them, um, and you'll see some of their work when we roll the video, um, which let's roll it.
So what, what you see there is about 25 acres of the 91. So south of that is our, our entertainment district that connects to all that. And, um, and I'll just talk about, just for a moment, and then, and then John will jump in here, about some of our discussions about what we wanted this to be and how that led us to Advent. Um, so as we were in a room, you know, so w we did the, the typical thing. We went out and looked at a bunch of other NFL training centers. We spent a little time at LA Live, and then we got in a room and said, you know, what's a true fan experience? Why would someone that's a Cowboys fan from anywhere in the world land at DFW and have a desire to come out to the star and walk around and take in this experience? And we said, how, do we, how could we possibly take some of the assets of our, our history and our tradition and weave them across the landscape um, of, of the star? And uh, of course, we didn't have that core expertise um, and so we went out and, and found that, and we found that in Advent. And, and John will talk about some of those early meetings where he started to share some of their vision after listening to us about how a fan could have an incredible interactive experience um, on our site. Um, along with that, we, we certainly, and it's not that this is new, but we want to do it in a little bit of a different way. From a sponsorship perspective, we wanted to bring our partners and our brands on site, um, and we started to think about what kind of inventory um, not the typical inventory, obviously there's naming rights, you saw that with Ford, but how could we create some other inventory um, around the campus that is something that we could go out and talk to a partner about. And that was another key element um, of the relationship um, with Advent. So I will turn it over to John to talk about how he entered the picture with us. So my name is John Robertson and I'm privileged to be able to, to work with Chad and the team at the Cowboys and the, the folks at Gensler have been first class partners with us to work uh, as well. And it's so interesting because when we have those initial conversations with the family and, and with the management, uh, we knew there were certain goals that wanted to be achieved and you see some of, the, of them here. And one of those was to do this unusually different. Chad talked about flipping it on its head. We knew that the Cowboys management believed we could get the fans there, but we had to prove that to them. We had to, to prove that model out. And so we had to be really intentional about creating and designing experiences that would pull the fans in. Our purpose in life is to design experiences that move people. So we wanted to be really intentional about that. But we also believed that if we could pull the fans in, we would give the sponsor partners a built-in audience with which to connect. And if we could do that through an experience, we could do it in a way that is authentic and true to the Cowboys brand. And so that's kind of what we set out to do. And part of what we kind of thought of as a rallying cry was this one, 355. Does anybody know what that represents? That's the number of days that the Dallas Cowboys will be here at this headquarters. And so if you can, as Chad said, get past the fact that usually we hide these kinds of operations from the consumer public, from the fans, from the sponsor partners, then what you have here is something very powerful. Uh, and if you love great stories and if you've read the research of all the marketers out there about great stories, what you realize is inherent in the 355 is an incredibly powerful narrative. Because if you're a fan or if you're a sponsor partner, this is where the heroes are made. And the reason that we love the, you know, the Lord of the Rings and Star Wars is not because the victor triumphs in the end. The reason we love those movies is because we see what the hero goes through to become the victor. So we believed if we could pull some of those experiences out and pull some of that narrative out onto these 91 acres, that it could be really powerful. So our job was to really design an experience that would be very powerful for the fans. And we start first with this experience value intersection where we think about how can these four parties win? You know, if you're not careful, and, and we certainly saw this in working with the Jones family, if you're not careful, uh, the sponsor will take over the experience, right? Uh, no offense to Johnsonville Sausage, but it'll become the Johnsonville Sausage experience, right? We wanted this to be a Dallas Cowboys experience brought to you by Dr. Pepper. So part of what we had to understand was what were the, the brand attributes that were valuable to Dr. Pepper, but at its core, what were the narrative themes that need to be brought to life on the campus? 
So I'm going to ask Chad's help in taking us through some of these spaces. We start first with the public plaza. You had some specific goals for what this public plaza would be like. Yeah, so we, I think early on we knew we wanted a plaza, and I, and I would say somewhat inspired by LA Live. And, um, but we had no idea what, would, what, what that should look like or what would occur there. I think we had thoughts of events and activation and tree lighting and Friday night concerts, but, but ultimately I think this was the first visual we saw. And the, the thing that really hit home for us here was a, a 50 yard turf replica field. Um, you know, we do a lot of tours in our stadium, AT&T Stadium. We know the value of people being able to touch and run and take pictures on that field. And we thought this would do the same. So we started to envision the first time we saw this of a family having a meal uh, down Star Boulevard at one of the restaurants, walking up to what's now the Tostitos Championship Plaza, um, running around on the field, Cowboys content on that video board. And uh, more than anything though, or not more than anything, it starts with that. But secondarily was all the sponsorship opportunities. There's heavy technology here. This is kind of our Times Square and the video boards that run down both sides and certainly the main video board on the Ford Center give us tremendous opportunity to monetize this space. And so, uh, you know, that was our first meeting. I remember in Oxnard when Advent came and showed us this and literally in the room it was that's what we need, and if you want to show what it is, looks like today. So one of the interesting things is that Chad spoke with you about the city of Frisco and their grand vision for their school district. And again, that's part of that kind of experience value intersection we were talking of. You, you can consider Frisco uh, and Frisco ISD a partner. How could we give them a, an experience that was authentic to the Cowboys, but we'd be true to their brand as well? well High schools would really love to practice and play at the home of the Dallas Cowboys. And so in addition to these being sponsor activated, on Friday nights, those screens can be activated one on one side for one team that is opposing another high school team on the other side. And there can be parades and pep rallies that draw you into the Ford Center. This is uh, shots that, that our team took last week. So that's the face there uh, of that beautiful Ford Center with the big screen. And again, these screens just come to life for the purpose of telling that narrative again about the high school team. Can you imagine how the high school team's captains are gonna feel when, they're, when their image comes up on these big screens? And then on either side of that, what we wanted to do, Chad mentioned it earlier, was to give additional pieces of sponsor inventory. Um, I think overall sponsors, and we spend a lot of time in collegiate athletics, folks think about donors the same way. You think about a donor naming a building or you think about a donor or sponsor naming a concourse. The key is to think about creating an experience that the sponsor can support. And so what our thought was is if on these side pylons, we could pull out an interactive experience here. This was an early sketch concept. It's got the brand United Healthcare. It would eventually become Tostitos. But we could make interactive kiosks outside. These are gonna be kinetic-based, gesture-based technology. Uh, one of the things we had to convince Chad and his team of is that we could pull this off. It had not been done gesture-based outside. That technology exists, but you only have seen it in pop-up stores. We believe we've got the technology uh, set. You but better. We better have it set, right? <laughs> this is the scale of it, so that's uh, it going up. But so you can get sense, there's an there's a, a installer, so you can see the, the back of that to sense the scale. This is what that finished product will look like and it will bring to life interactive content that the fans want to engage with that can either ca then it can even capture fan data again on this campus to bring to life a story point. You know, I'll just mention one thing about the, the sales approach to this was, um, was different, and I, and I know there's some of my colleagues in the room in the NFL that obviously we go out and we sell integrated marketing packages and, and we're not menu iting, iteming that for the client. And, um, and a lot of the value we're deriving is from their association with our brand, and we all know that. In this instance, we did not have the opportunity to do that because we were going to our current client base, and we're asking, we're going for an upsell, um, and they're already paying for their association with the brand, so we had to sell specific inventory for a specific price. And, uh, and, and that was different, and, and a little bit of a different discussion. To some degree, it made it a little more simple 
um, you know, it was pretty direct. It's like, hey, for this piece of inventory, it's X. And if you want to add on some of these others, or if you want that, you have to add on some of these others. And we needed some signature items. And uh, so certainly the Tostitos Championship Plaza was one. The Ford Center was an obvious one. But these four pillars that um, uh, are uh, kind of outlining the plaza with that interactive uh, touchscreen were significant items for us to take to a partner because the integration um, that they could, they could have within the games that we're going to put into the screens. So uh, as we, we did an evaluation of, of the kind of campus from a sponsorship standpoint and um, really created kind of that menu, and these were some of the significant items we were able to package up. It's interesting because uh, uh, part of what we saw, if you don't mind me saying this, if you do, you'll have to kill me later, but um, part of what we saw was when left to their own devices, the sponsors became extraordinarily kind of cartoonish and flamboyant in how they perceived activating the space and engaging the audiences. And you probably know enough about the Jones family to know that they have uh, a vision and a level of standard and taste that they want to achieve. And so with that as a priority and a driving value, it allowed us to be able to suggest to Chad and his sales team appropriate story and narrative touchstones that already had been vetted and fit with the Cowboy standards and the Jones family standards. So that was really important. If, in other words, if Tostitos promotion team and their agency had created the way to activate that space, it would look very different. It would look very uh, commercialized. It would look very promotional. So now Tostitos can still achieve their marketing objective, but do it in a way that's truly authentic to the Cowboys fan. And that became true as well for the, the, the Ford Center. So just take you back to that campus. There's the 91-acre campus, the big building, the indoor practice facility uh, that's so much more than that with the star on it is where we'll go next. And just behind that big screen is going to be uh, the Texas Lottery Lobby. And so here I just want to take you back again to the narrative. Our team thought of the idea that there is this hero's journey. And what we forget sometimes is that Tony Romo, uh, or Roger Staubach, they played high school football too. Just like the folks are going to be playing high school football in this practice facility. And so what, what if we showed that parallel and just embraced it? And so the thought would be to show the progression in the Texas Lottery lobby. Uh, and so we'll have these interactive pylons that you see there at the far end, but then notice the graphics on the left hand uh, kind of uh, uh, header there, and then on the right hand header, we're going to have the helmets of the various teams. You'll be able to interact with the history of, of Texas high school education. But we're going to be really bold about showing the hero's journey. We're going to remind you that Tony Romo was indeed a high school player. We're going to parallel and elevate the captains of the Frisco high school teams right up there with Tony Romo. So it's a very unusual way. You heard the previous speaker talk about embracing the community. It's a very unusual way to embrace the community. We'll have those high school teams throughout Texas represented. And then as you go down that concourse, we introduce to you. Uh, and John, let yeah. me just jump in on that. On the lottery, it's just a good example. Um, the difference for us from a sales standpoint to go out with a pitch deck and sit with our partner, the lottery has been a partner of the Cowboys, and show them these ideas to get them engaged and enthused about what we're doing versus just saying, hey, the, the lobby is, we're gonna, you know, we're trying to find X amount for the lobby and we'll get together and figure out how we're gonna put your brand on it. Um, you know, this obviously told a story and the story connected to the lottery because a portion of uh, the funds generated from the lottery go back to the school systems. And uh, so that's where the connection was. And we wouldn't have been able to make that connection if we were simply just going out and saying, we want to monetize the lobby and, and let's go figure out what it might be. And uh, you know, it's, it's easy to get pretty excited about these renderings um, because of the story it tells. So similarly, uh, you know, I grew up in a small town. And if you grew up in a small town in Texas, uh, high school football is epitomized not only by Friday Night Lights, but where everybody goes after the game, right? And in Texas, where everybody goes after the game is Whataburger. And so we wanted to bring to life a concept that Whataburger could really get excited about and really embrace. And so the thought was, can we show a concept in this concourse that really calls out Friday Night Lights, that shows 
not only the, the players of the week, but the coaches of the week, and really embraces the community so that Whataburger is really proud to bring this element of the story together as well. Because again, without those Friday night lights and high school football, where would the Cowboys be? So it is indeed part of the narrative, but it's very specific in control. So uh, that's Whataburger. There's going to be a real unique projection technology that will be up, up in that uh, the profile shape of the state there uh, so that the whole thing kind of comes to life. And then uh, let's take you down restaurant and retail row. And so uh, this is really a special place on the campus. So you, it's kind of the lower half of this campus. And I think, Chad, this was one of the earliest concepts that we showed you. So um, we've done several hundred college projects. And one of the things that we're seeing in the next room, the Futures Company, is talking about millennials. And I know you know this, but this is an experience economy. And millennials and Generation Z want to live by experiences. And they want to accumulate experiences and narrate a story of their life through these experiences, most of which are Instagrammable and tweetable. And so what we wanted to do was very deliberately serve up Instagrammable moments. We didn't want it to ta be taken for granted or, or by chance. And so part of the process in working with Chad and his team, who, who made our team better, was to convince them first of an idea that they could sell or present to a sponsor. And so this is actually one of our hand sketches that we thought of. What if we rethought the whole concept of a ring of honor and brought those numbers dimensionally out of the sidewalk so that an individual could literally stand behind the number and have their photo made with it? And we've taken it one step further. We've developed an app. What if the app that you download then allows that retired number individual to come into your Instagrammable photo? Right? So we can extend the experience. So this became the Dr. Pepper Ring of Honor. And Chad, I don't know if you want to talk about Dr. Pepper's kind of reaction and partnership, but they've really embraced this. Yeah, I, I think it, it's a similar story to something like the lottery is to, you know, we have now monetized the street. And, um, you know, that's just not so easy to do. And, and we did it with something that uh, is very core to our brand, the Ring of Honor. If you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, that's a meaningful thing. And to bring that to life in this way is significant. And, and honestly, Dr. Pepper jumped all over it. And uh, we, we've tied in um, how they're going to honor someone in the local community. They're based uh, in the community there. And, and so uh, with the Community Ring of Honor walk, um, they're going to be honoring people in the community like we honor people um, in the Ring of Honor. And, um, but, but as much as that's a great story with Dr. Pepper, this one to me um, is, is also incredibly exciting for what it does to the fan experience coming on site. Because I, I really anticipate people just meandering up and down that street, reading about um, our past stars and seeing the story and taking pictures and really having a brand experience that doesn't exist you know, with our franchise today um, uh, up and down the street. And uh, we, we had our press conference to announce this about two weeks ago. We had Roger Staubach and, and Drew Pearson come out and uh, just to hear them talk about what this meant to them uh, to have their numbers raised out of the ground at our headquarters, you know, for the rest of their lives. And, um, and then, of course, the media and publicity that surrounded those two speaking about it, you know, got us off to a really, really great start uh, with the Ring of Honor concept. I actually have that video, and if we have time, I'll, I'll show that uh, the film that the Dallas Morning News took from, from the, that press conference. Um, it, it really is a special moment, and it, it allows us to offer the Cowboys something that they can also incrementally unveil. Uh, so sometimes I believe we take moments for granted. Moments are really important. That's part of the experience economy. So as you can imagine, unveiling these numbers one at a time, we're able to extend the experience, create a photo opportunity, and encourage fans to come back again and again. And then these are going to be really beautiful because they'll be in, uh, internally lit, so you'll be able to read them and see them at night as well. And then I, I, I think that retailers are even maybe jockeying for position around which number or which, <laughs> right? There's, there's, there's a little bit of that, that going yeah. on, right? <laughs> Uh, so that's part of kind of the experience as well. And then you, you talked about this as the press conference, but tell the folks what this represents. It's really uh, special. Right. Roger and Drew connected for what's considered the original Hail Mary uh, against the Vikings. Um, I don't know what year, but um, in a playoff game. And so I, it was, I think, around a 60-yard pass. So what we're going to do is embed their cleats and their signatures in the pavement 
uh, in the exact distance of the pass as just another element um, for fans to interact. So one of the groups that you saw on that experience value intersection was VIPs. And you may know, and Chad can tell you more about the fact that already, as a part of the Dallas Cowboys model, they monetize tours of AT&T Stadium. So they wanted to extend that thought to be able to, do or, uh, to provide tours uh, to the Dallas Cowboys headquarters, but to be able to tier it on an experience level. VIPs, blue chip, behind the scenes tours. And so the thought was, could we give these VIPs a special experience? And so working with the Gensler team and laying out how that structure would come to life, we wanted to really elevate a couple of these very special places within the headquarters that most people are really dying to see behind the scenes. Again, part of the hero's journey. So the war room is one of those. And right now it's kind of taking place in part of the, the uh, Valley Ranch facility and it, it's not uh, incredibly thoughtfully done. The technology has kind of eclipsed the, the size of the room. So what we thought about and planned with Gensler, what would it be like if we could bring to life the war room in a way that really added some prestige and some suspense and some drama. So we're going to take the original scouting reports from the notebooks. We're going to use, again, a special projection technology. And those notebooks uh, will actually animate and come to life uh, in the exterior of this war room so that you can understand how management made its decision, what sort of uh, attributes they were looking for at the time. And we'll be able to rotate that through, but that'll be part of the VIP experience. And then again, equip the room with the appropriate technology. But it, it extends on down. Uh, you know, the, the, one of the things that we did as a part of our uh, due diligence and research was really listen to the coaches. And the coaches really are trying to create a culture. We see this extensively in the collegiate uh, market where coaches are trying to encourage the team to follow a certain culture. Well, the coach at Valley Ranch has these awards, these boxing glove awards that you see there, these hammer awards, game ball awards. And so our job was just to translate those now in a way that wasn't an afterthought, that wasn't kind of an impromptu fabrication, but they really had a place and a home in the facility. And then uh, one of the grandest things that a VIP would want to see is, of course, really where is the home of the Cowboys facility. So now at AT&T Stadium, you can tour the locker room. Uh, we wanted you as a VIP to be able to tour this locker room here, and we wanted it to be grand. And so, you know, there, this is a rendering. There are shadow men in there to sense how grand it is, but we put our designer in front of the actual wall that's going up in Frisco so you can see how, just how sizable this is. But it's huge. Gensler has designed this beautiful locker room, and then we're going to hang this unbelievably huge star in the middle that's faceted uh, that will come to life. And there's part of it, Chad, just so you'll know, it really is real. That's part of it in prototype in our shop coming together. And there's the, the place that it will hang in, in the locker room. But again, that's meant to take your breath away because a space that many of us think is really functional is something that a lot of people would like to see. So we wanted to create some prestige and drama. And then one of the things the coaches wanted, and we've done this a number of times on college campuses, but the first time we've ever done it for a professional team was a touchstone, a literal touchstone. So here is this star that will float and levitate as you go out to the practice field. Uh, it'll be illuminated. Uh, and at the base of it is a mantra the coach believes in, which is as a privilege, not a right to play and coach for the Dallas Cowboys. So they'll be able to touch that for luck, just like play like a champion today. But again, for VIPs, we're serving up quite a distinctive Instagrammable, tweetable moment as well. Uh, and then uh, Chad told you about the Hail Mary play. So uh, one of the things that the Jones family does really well is art and public art. Uh, and there was a stairway that was a little bit of a, a, a backstage, behind the scenes stairway. And we wanted to try to create a piece of art it was very distinctive. Uh, and so the thought was, how could we do it around this Hail Mary play? So you remember this play. Again, this was the play that defined the Hail Mary. Uh, Staubach to Pearson, right? And he caught it on his hip. But what's interesting is in that video footage, there are these clips. So the thought was, what if we took those clips, those individual footage that makes up the film strip, and created a mobile hanging of those plays, the individual components, because it was so dramatic and defining. 
And so even the employees whom we want to motivate and, and remind of the DNA of the Cowboys will get to experience this at the, as they walk around uh, the, the facility. So uh, there's branding, there's uh, Cowboys DNA everywhere. There's this star walk experience that goes and takes you into the history uh, of the team. We're going to show you the gear, which is really important and certainly really important to fans, the history of the gear. And then in the lobby, just off of the, the atrium, we've got an experience where the opposing team that the Cowboys are playing, is, their helmet is illuminated with the Cowboys' helmet as well. And then uh, in the Cowboys facility, uh, just where you know, the day-to-day -day employees are, we wanted to pull the DNA uh, and the brand out into the facility as well. And so the conference rooms are themed. They're themed about the narrative and story of the Cowboys. So you, uh, talk about your philosophy of the tours and giving VIP something special to experience. Yeah, I, I think um, you know, we, we certainly have, we have a pretty robust tour program at AT&T Stadium and we've learned a lot from it. And we just thought as we got into this, certainly we're building things people are gonna wanna see. And then how do we create that tour path? And certainly how do we create a tour path that doesn't interrupt what's happening with football. And um, so there'll be certainly versions of the tour based on uh, when, you know, what's going on in the back uh, with the football team. But in addition to the tour business, which was just simply another way to monetize everything we're doing here, another business that we feel really good about, most of these spaces were created as dual spaces um, for the catered event um, convention business. So uh, we are a 50-50 partner in that Omni Hotel. And we've basically merged sales uh, units, and we're going to—we're already out into the market, talking about how people can come and do two and three-day uh, business conventions and meetings, and utilize these unique spaces that we have. And we think we're already getting a great reaction to that we think there's something really unique around um, the spaces that we have, and the and the brand experience people will get, and what the Omni has to offer, and all the entertainment district. There's just a real tie-in. Not to mention, um, you know, the, the planning and, and booking of the Ford Center when we're not practicing or playing high school football and we're already seeing a lot of activity there with, with other events. So, uh, so we think, you know, this, this branding piece, certainly if you're going to tour someone back there, you know, it was really important for them to see our history. And uh, we have, over my nine years there, multiple times talked about having a Hall of Fame, putting one in the stadium or, or somewhere else. And, and what we really like about this, what our kind of new mantra is, is we've taken our Hall of Fame and we've spread it across um, our campus and uh, have really given people ways to, to have a great brand experience. Even the dining facility, uh, to, to Chad's point, uh, and especially uh, Charlotte Jones Anderson, who leads the marketing and branding for the Cowboys, she felt like the, the balance that had to be struck was a Hall of Fame sometimes looks frozen in time. And so how can you make the brand look living and breathing, present and future, not just past? And so here is the, uh, uh, the dining facility for the Cowboys. But even in the dining facility, there's not only modern day video, but there are gonna be artifacts in the dining facility. And as Chad was saying, even the, the Cowboys everyday, pardon the expression, cafeteria, their dining facility can be used as a part of the event uh, landscape, the hospitality landscape overall. Uh, so uh, we've got a little bit of time. I wanted to show you. This is the video from the press conference that Chad was talking about. I want you to listen as you hear this. So this is right from, from the uh, news in Dallas. Listen to the language that the, uh, the former players use as they realize how the Cowboys are honoring them in this. It's quite special. Friend and a, and a, and a great receiver. We, we made a lot of good plays together. And, uh, and still Chuck. Yes, Still close, I, said, I closed my eyes and, and uh, said a Hail Mary because when I threw it, it was, I, you know, I kind of intentionally underthrew him, you know, it was, uh, so he could catch it on his hip. <laughs> but it, it was another example of it. He was, he was a great basketball player, too, with great hands. So that play uh, was a big play. We, we won a big game, and it was a playoff game. And, uh, and after the, afterwards, I did say I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary, but Drew Pearson made the play, and the AP writer picked it up, and uh, 
So that's the only reason we're up here today, because of the Hail Mary pass. So, okay. you know, a skinny leg kid from South River, New Jersey, is now immortalized as a Dallas Cowboy. And, you know, every time I came down that tunnel in Texas Stadium to play a football game for the Dallas Cowboys after I made it as an undrafted free agent, 17 rounds of the draft, 452 players, no one drafted me. I'm almost over that. <laughs> you know, you gotta move on in life, Gary. You can't dwell on those negatives. <laughs> so every time I walked down that tunnel in Texas Stadium, I would look to the right and see those names in the Ring of Honor, and I wanted my performance that day to one day be enough to warrant, to be part of the process to warrant me to have that type of recognition and represent the Dallas Cowboys that way. And then when I got into the Ring of Honor, it was so great to see your name up there with all these other great Cowboy players and be uh, in association with the Dallas Cowboys and where every fan that came into AT&T Stadium would see your name up there. And now to have that extended here to the star in Frisco, it's just amazing. And uh, because now it's going to be able to have more fans see it and more fans have the memories and more recognition for the great service that you gave to the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, um, we'll take any questions anybody might have. Biggest single obstacle in the, you put something like that together, like I, I drive past it twice a day and it's amazing. It's, uh, but you know, when you do something like that, there's, but if you had to pick one, Chad, what would be the biggest obstacle? You know, I, I think, um, Quite honestly, is getting Jerry over the hump that this was all a really good idea. Um, he, uh, when, when we started with this, and, and the family business that we work in, it's Jerry and his three kids, and um, you know they're all very active in our business on a day-to-day -day basis. And he had invested so much, so much risk, so much of his heart and soul in AT&T Stadium that I don't know if he was truly ready for another one. And he started out kind of slow, questioning everything, and didn't see really financially early on how we were going to be able to monetize this. And then I think once we started to show him, probably the biggest significant thing that, that got him going was our sponsors started coming. And obviously it was part of this. It was part of showing our sponsors what we were able to do. When he started to see that, and you know Jerry, then all of a sudden he started the money started coming and things became better and bigger and nicer and, and all the above. So, um, you know, that, that really kind of sticks with me that I look back over the three years. Other questions? Good, good question. So right now there's about 700 million invested into the project, um, but there's a, there's a lot of future development space. So I think when it's all said and done, it could be a 1.2 to $1.5 billion project as a whole. Um, so, so it's a great question on, on the other front. Um, the city and the school district, and those are our two partners, but then we made it more complicated because we became a 50-50 partner in a hotel a 50-50 partner in a fitness center, um, and then we've added some other businesses. So when you just think about what's going on, it's just a lot. The, the, the part, though, that's just been so good, honestly, is the partnership with the city and the school district. And uh, it's a unique city. They, they're very entrepreneurial. They operate almost like a business. Um, I think we found when we, we got into those discussions with them, um, I think what they knew with us is that we would come and then spend more than they thought we would and that's happening and so um, not that there's not bumps along the way um, and the school district is the same things like is the school district going to be okay with the field being so cowboy centric branded and the answer was yes the superintendent thinks that's a better experience for the students than if it said Frisco instead of the star 
We had an issue, though, just to touch on it, where um, they had spent some time designing their high school locker rooms. We went out and did a deal with Nike, and then we wanted Nike to design the locker rooms. Well, there was some challenging discussions because they had gone down a path already. The end result probably is Nike's going to go design probably the best high school locker rooms you know, in the world. Um, but we had a week or so of kind of working through those challenges. So, um, I, you know, just a lot of good communication and, and partnership has gotten us through. But um, they haven't been real challenging, to be honest. They've kind of let us do our thing, which, which has been good. Anybody else? So the question that everybody wants to know, what, what's the, the thing you would have done differently? What, what went wrong that you wish you hadn't done or as you think back? I'm just waiting to make sure your interactives work. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I hope that's not the thing we look back on as the mistake, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, honestly, there's, there's not a lot here. You know, I'll say this, that we, we are now we're now getting into execution mode. There's, a, there's one thing to be able to dream about what this is, and uh, we have a lot to pull off on the execution side. We're in a lot of meetings right now. The first event in the Ford Center is, um, is four high school football games in one day. And uh, we still have a massive construction project just south of the Ford Center, which is all the retail district and the hotels under construction. And we're gonna have two different sessions of 12,000 people show up for that day. And so that's it's just a daunting task. You know, to make sure that someone can come have a meal in a restaurant while 5,000 people are going to an event in the Ford Center and our football team is practicing and people have a good office experience. I really think those are the challenges of, of the execution and the operation of what we've created. We all have a lot to do between now and yes, June and August. That's right. Good. Yeah, well, that's a good question. So I, I think two things. I think um, the Jones family, are, they're entrepreneurs, and so they love the action of it. I mean, there's just no doubt. A new idea, something they think they can go do. They've been in the real estate business. They've maintained the oil and gas business. So while they, there's a lot of attention, obviously, on the Cowboys and football, they've always had some other business interests. And, and then I think the other thing is partners. Um, you know, so, for example, the hotel... While we're a 50-50 partner and we're working with them, they're running the hotel. You know, on the fitness center, we teamed up with Mark Mastrov, who started 24-Hour Fitness, part owner of the Sacramento Kings, and he is operating the fitness center. We're going to help market it. It's going to have our brand on it. So I think in some of those cases, we've tried just to take the role of how we can help and what we know, and then let experts run what they know how to do. Uh, the exception is probably the, the Cowboys Club, which is that private membership club that overlooks the practice facilities, and we just, we just gave that a go. And uh, we sold it so far. Now we got to make sure we operate it well, but it, it, it sold, sold really, really well. It sold out at the moment. Um, so I think there's, um, you know, I'll say this, coming off AT&T Stadium, uh, and for those of you who've built new stadiums, I know there's a few in here, you know, it's almost a little bit of a letdown not to have something so big going on. This has certainly filled the gap. I, I think for those of us who have experienced both now, um, this honestly is more complex and has more to it than building an NFL stadium. But um, I think there's an appetite and an enthusiasm in our organization that starts with our owners. And there's been times where we've hit a pause button and said, are we taking on too much? You know, we have a, a restaurant going in here called City Works. I think there might be one in Minneapolis or Chicago, kind of like a yard house. And we were saying to ourselves, well, shouldn't we just do a Cowboys sports bar and do that on our own? And then we said, wait, you know, let's let someone who knows how to really do that come in and do it. And so we've leased the building. But uh, we, we've talked ourselves out of a few things that we thought maybe we were getting, getting a little bit too deep into it. One, one follow-up to your question. Uh, after working so closely with the Jones family and, and not knowing a lot about the inside of professional sports, be careful how you describe your business. 
uh, because Theodore Levitt wrote that great article about marketing myopia, right? And he talked about the folks that originally built the horse and carriages, the carriages for horses. They thought they were in the carriage business and didn't realize they were actually in the transportation business. Don't be narrow in your view of your organization. I, I got to hear Mr. Jones Sr., Jerry, uh, speak at, at an event, and he's very passionate about the fact that this team that he owns is a platform. He was speaking to business people in the room and partners, sponsor partners, but it's a platform for those sponsor partners and those business people to grow their business. And just like our previous speaker, he has a real personal story about how he used sports early on in his sales career and an insider access to grow his own book of business. And so on one hand, you're in the sports business, narrowly defined, they're in the professional football business, but they really are in the entertainment business. They're really in the brand business, and they're extending that brand in ways that other people can take the platform and use it. The proximity that people want to have to this brand and the association that people want to have to this brand and to the excitement, and yes, the momentum had to build on itself, uh, but it's something really powerful. And um, again, I, I go back to that hero's journey. Uh, people really want to see how those heroes are made. It, is a, it, is, uh, it transcends wins and losses. Uh, so think about the perspective of what you have and what you're working with. You had another question. been asked that a lot, uh, and that, that topic will continue to come up. You know, I think Don back there might be leasing an office overlooking the practice fields here soon. But uh, so a couple things. First of all, understand our organization. Um, the coach knows what he signed up for, and the coach is not dictating what's going on out there. Um, our owner is. So it, it really... It really starts with that. Now, not to be disrespectful to that. I mean, we, of course, we, we're having a lot of conversations about how to manage, you know, we can't book a, a, a breakfast in the Ford Center for 1,000 people and have the team have a thunderstorm and they want to go inside and we're like, sorry, you know, get on buses and go. I mean, we're not going to do that. Um, we're not going to march a tour right into the locker room when the guys are in the back. So we're, we're going through all of that right now. The most glaring one is we have offices overlooking our practice fields. And um, for the times where Coach Garrett needs to have privacy on practice, he'll go into the Ford Center and we can do a complete lockdown with what's going on in the Ford Center. So there's no doubt they, there is a much more open environment here than probably anywhere else in the league um, with still the ability when needed to, to shut it down and provide the privacy. Other questions? How would you describe Jerry Jones to those of us who don't know him? Um, uh, you know, incredibly passionate, entrepreneurial. Um, uh, he, what, what, here, uh, what, here's what I'll say though that probably would be the part that most people would not believe maybe or not understand. Um, very open to disagreement, debate, and discussion. You can sit in a meeting with Jerry and say, I, I think it should be this way, or I'm not sure I like it that way, or, and he wants to have that conversation. I think a lot of people think he's probably just always dictating, uh, and that's not the case. Secondly, he does more kind things for people that no one knows about. Um, for people on his staff, me personally, they've made me feel like family, uh, just very welcoming, very inclusive. Um, Jerry, if Jerry came into this room, the first person he talked to um, he'd look them in the eye and they'd be the most important person in the room for the entire time he's talking to him. He's never looking beyond who's, the, who's my equal that I need to go seek out. He's just actually very, very genuine that way. And um, Now, when that man wants something or tells you he's going to do something, then you know, you know that too. But uh, it's a pretty wonderful family to, to work for um, in, in pretty much all ways. Any other questions? We wanted to finish early. I think we have achieved that. Katie, Ian, thank you guys. But thank you all for your attention. We appreciate it.